100% end UFC, so the season's now finished. Newcastle have finished in a class top 10 finish. I'm joined by Lee and Alicia from Newcastle Fans TV. We're just going to be discussing the season, you know, their thoughts and looking at the next season, really. So we'll start off with Lee. What was your thoughts going into 2017 2018? I know we'd just come from the championship and Rafa Benitez, and we didn't really spend enough to win. What was your overall thoughts at the start of the season? You know, it didn't start off too yeah. well, did it? I was just speaking to Alicia before off camera saying we done our predictions video and I had us to finish 15. As long as we just stayed up, that's a good season. It's delivered more than expectations. We finished 10th, which is absolutely fantastic. But going all the way back, to finish 17th and above was the aim because we were all angry. You know, that August transfer window, there was no money spent. We all done a live video yep. ourselves and we're all frustrated, all angry at it. And it was like, how are we going to stay up with this squad? Because it's a championship squad and to be fair a few of them can't still get into the Premier League sites but to finish where we are now it's, it's it is it's 10 out of 10 what a season so Alicia this season didn't get off to the best possible start you know we lost the last I think we lost the first three games if I'm not wrong in the Premier League and we also lost against Nottingham Forest uh, mm -hmm. to James is in the uh, League Cup what was your overall feelings when we lost all four games Do you think the season was going to be a lot of fans were saying it was going to be a bad one were you on that sort of Way, way as well, no, because in the championship was in not after a good start either. So, you know, it's going back up. It's not going to be easy. Everybody had it in their head. Yes, we've got Rafa. Yes, he's done a brilliant job and he's a great manager. But, you know, you've got to give your players time to settle back into it. The Premier League is completely different league to the championship. And we know that now. And, yeah, hopefully this season will kick off better because we've had a pretty good end of the season, you know, beating Chelsea 3 0 at all. So hopefully that confidence carries on from the last the beginning of the next season. Obviously, it did take a while for it to kick in. I mean, the first win of the season was at Wolfen uh, West Ham. Mm -hmm. Did you just have that buzz feeling that we could just you know, see it through? Because before we signed the likes of Kennedy, you know, the likes of you know Dubravka, Samari, did we, did you feel just we have likes of Dwight Field, Hossler? Do you think it was? Do you think we we're just yeah. not going to have enough? No, because I don't think we were doing particularly bad. Apart from Watford, it was the only time we'd done particularly bad. The other times it was unlucky. You know, you look at Bournemouth winning in the 94th, 95th minute. That was just unlucky. We had a lot of them games this season. And to be honest, apart from that Watford game, we didn't really perform that poorly. It was only by the odd goal, was wasn't it? It was only by the odd goal, you know, I think we were just slightly unlucky. Uh, Lee, so. You know, when we did win that game against West Ham 3 0, we were having some back to back wins, weren't we? Were the confidence was there, wasn't it, within the team that we, we, we did believe that we could. We could it came from nowhere, didn't it? We were all done up, we were all after the game, fan counts and everything, and we were all in high spirits. It came from nowhere, that's up there with probably the top five performances this season. you got you got to remember as well, everybody was down in the dumps I as well. Because it, it, it was on the Nottingham Forest game on, I think it was Tuesday or the Wednesday. We did, we and then, yeah, and then we beat, you know, they beat West Ham. Four days later, we were even saying if we don't beat West Ham, we are in big, big trouble. And then we went on that where we won three in a row and it looked a little bit easier going at the end of August. But then the transfer buys just didn't happen and we went back down to square one. I was like, oh, we're deflated again. But we wanted to see money invested. And I think, like I said earlier, just before you were just there, 10 out of 10 for the season that he's done. I know we've had highs and lows, but that was a great end at the season, great end of August. But a poor way to end it as well by not bringing anyone in. So, you know, we did win those games. We went through a period in the season where we actually lost a lot of home games. I'm sure, yeah, it, was, nine, I'm, I'm it? sure it was about four months we went through the whole season not winning at home, which did you not get a bit anxious that we just couldn't do it because we all knew this season the home performances were going to be key to stay in the Premier League. If you want to stay up, you've got to win. I had always faith in Rafa. I know you had the daft it is. I've talked about it a couple of times. They wanted Rafa around because we're losing games. In other teams, manager losing eight out of nine games would get you the sack. It would. But because we've got Rafa Benitez, we know what he can do later on. And he's had a history of proving it, that he's had success. He's loved by the club and you can't sack him, he's unsackable. I mean, what did help? The fact that even though we were losing games at home, we were still getting results away from home. You know, I can remember the likes of Swansea away, Jamal LaSalle, you know, scoring the winner. Yeah. Places like that, we were actually picking up points, which was helping at the time when we couldn't get the results at home, which would have been due to fan pressure, but of course it would have been you know, the expectation. I think what helped, you know, that run that eight out of nine defeats, you know, when we were 2 0 down against West Brom, yes. we brought on Shelby and the game changed and we drew. We lost the next couple, but that was still signed, that was a fight there amongst the squad that we could still fight, and the lads are still playing for Rafa Benitez. That was the biggest indication. And then the results started to turn, turn again we on a great one Christmas afterwards. Yeah, I was about to say that, you know, through Christmas, the really did start putting effort in. But then 
the new signings came in, you know, the likes of Debravkas, sort of Marnie, uh, Kennedy. The words, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the word probably what we're expecting really at the start of January. We, we, we were expecting, you know, a lot better, but in terms of what we needed in January, it was a goal scorer that was going to get with the goals. And I think Kennedy for me was a stand at one that actually got with, you know, the, he had that quality which was going to break down the I, I was a bit, um, Kennedy, what's he going to bring? Because he's been a fringe player, Chelsea didn't make it. When he went to Watford, they wanted to games. And Dubravka won, I got it totally wrong, remember? When you were yes. saying Dubravka's going to be number one, you and Paul, I, I, you went, I, I said it all the way through. The, I you said and Paul, said, yeah. mate, yeah. uh, I said, nah, he's going to be third choice goalkeeper, allow Woodman to go out alone. Totally wrong about that. What a gem. He just unearthed him from like the middle of Eastern Europe. Um, that gave us the bounce, it gave us the boost. Then you started to see the likes of Shelby up his game at Giammi, and what the hell happened to him? Yep. Magic, Lucas Aid, and all of that. Um, <laughs> Everybody just seemed to have that burst of energy, didn't they? Going, going towards Shelby, the Shelby, Richie. Um, you know, there was several, Lejeune, the last elf partner, Paul Dummett was being a rock. It was just, there was eight or nine of them who were playing at the very peak and it helped us push up that league table. So, Alicia, a uh, poor January actually turned into a really good January if you think yeah. about it. I mean, the results that we were getting. I mean, what did you make of the free selling? So, when we said Slamoni to Bradka, what did you think? Was it Kennedy? Was, I knew what? Kennedy had the potential. If he was under a good manager, which he was here, he had the potential and he shined. He shined and he's known. And by the looks of the post, he might not be back. Hopefully, he does, but it's looking unlikely. Dubravka, he's been excellent. I think he's allowed the team to play forward because if you're comfortable defensively, your players will push forward, not worrying about what's behind them. And he's done that. Slomani didn't say enough of him. Got Good stupid he, he did assist a couple of against Huddersfield, which was the reason we got the, we got the wins. You got to remember that the assist helped in terms of the goals. Yeah, but he was price. supposed to be here for a long time and not getting suspended. So his behaviour wasn't there. And if you got players that are going to kick out the time, look at he drummed it into Shelby after that first game of the season. He hasn't been booked since Christmas. Rafa's not going to stand for them players, and he's going to get them out. You're either going to change your attitude, or you're going to get out. And I don't think Simone will be back in I did state for the record that I actually didn't want Simone to sign. And yeah, I've been proved to be right over the course of the year. He's known spell. Uh, so, so we had to more good results. You know, Stoke away, which I think we both went. We really enjoyed it. A good day out with Stoke. You know, I think we dominated the game. We deserved, deserved the win. And the Man United game, for me, was the, the game which really kicked on. Uh, yeah. Because towards the end of the season, that 1-0 win, just... Bravka, Kennedy, everybody. Can I just say who predicted would be Man United? You did, you did, to be fair, she did predict Man United uh, that, that would lose uh, 1 0 and it did. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't there. But it was just the fact we're beating a really good team, Manchester United, with the quality that they've got. Yeah. Mourinho still hasn't won it in James's. Yeah, I, I think Bravka's hey! just going to always outclass him. And he always has, you know, there's always been that rivalry. Both ex Chelsea managers, both going for the same thing. and He's always going to do it, and I think he's just got that thing over. So, they a really good end of the season, you know, winning with back to back to back home games. I mean, okay, the last, what, four games before the last game of the season against Chelsea, the world has fizzed out a little bit. We didn't think last game of the season that we could do it against Chelsea. It was always going to be a tough ask, you know, they had the Champions League football. We were contentious to play, play for the top 10. We were in the driving seat. What was your thought, or what were you, what were you thinking? Well, we won four in a row. Four in a row. We won, that's like Roy Hodgson. We won four in a row, but then we lost four in a row. That's typical us of the season. Inconsistency, wasn't it? Just... But I think once we won that four in a row, we were safe, and I think it was all a bit of a it's relaxed a little bit and I think the players started to do that, the performances dipped, sloppy mistakes, but then going in the Chelsea game I thought let's just end it on a high. Yes. It's a celebration day for us, you know, yeah. for the la what a form is the lads put the lads put it 3-0 now. We didn't expect yeah. that. That came left field. It really did. Chelsea really surprised me putting out a weakened side. No yeah. one I know Liverpool won, it's easy to say in hindsight, but during the game they wouldn't have known that and I was surprised but credit the lads, what a what a performance. What an atmosphere as well, credit to Wolf Lads. I think it, it was for me one of the games of the season, it was a defining game. game, yeah, because which got with a top ten finish. Uh, so top ten, uh, you know, what's your thoughts of Newcastle finishing tenth? I know you wouldn't have had them uh, tenth at the start of the season. Um do you think we can really kick on now uh, for, for next season with, with us, if we get some signs with the I goal? agree with what, what Rafa said is he wants top 10 comfortable top 10. Um, what I mean by that is we're constantly in that top 10, we're comfortable in there, we never look like we're going to break out of that. Yep. So like a Burnley, 
maybe we can jump that next bracket, that next bracket. We need to try and aim for top seven. I mean, that's not out of the question. I mean, you know, Everton yeah. have had a poor season, you know. That's the next bracket, seven, seven upwards, seven downwards, sorry. And I think the top six way, way out. We're nowhere near that. You need, you need the financial clout to do that. You've got to have it with 300, 400 million to get that near them top four. You've got to. And next season, have a great cup run, maybe a trip to Wembley. would love that, you know, on the travel, especially with the channels that both me and you do, and Lisha. So that's what I want next season. Come to the top ten. It's sensible. It's optional. A couple of um, good buys, stability, and a new owner. So your game of the season, you'd say, would be Chelsea? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, Lisha, so... Top 10 finish, mm -hmm. Chelsea. What was your overall thoughts going into this one? Newcastle were always in the drug, uh, driving seat for top 10, but Chelsea yeah. had something to play for. We, you, I, I imagine you were, you were confident, you know, being, being at home before that we'd lost the four in a row. I was confident we were going to win. Rafa needed to go out this season in the style that he's coming in. He's a brilliant manager. And I think that pushed the lads just to give that last final 110% for Rafa for the end of the season. You know, it was at home. We had the home advantage. Chelsea in limbo, are they going to sack the manager? They're not. They're not happy. They're not happy with the players. Fielded a very weak team for Chelsea, to be fair. Clearly looking for the FA Cup. Um, but they just played awful on the day. And I was watching. We should have been 5 6. Easy. We were totally dominated the game. Chelsea had no idea. No, yeah. no, no clearly going for the FA Cup, whether they win that or not. But comfortable win and it was just brilliant day. So Newcastle finished top 10, mm -hmm. what would your expectations be for next season? Where, would, where do you think we should be aiming for? Because we don't know what the future holds yeah. in terms of the summer, we don't know if Mike Ash is going to give uh -huh. Rafa the money. Will Rafa still be in the job? I imagine he still will be. He has been linked with a West Ham job, which I probably can't see happening. But what do you think of that? I mean, there's, there's this with Rafa Benitez, will he sign his contract, will he not? It's what was. He's still going to be here next season, because it doesn't run out till. Back end of but you'd still be very surprised at what can happen when you've um, got yet to run. No, uh, comfortable top 10. If Rafa's still here, comfortable top 10. I doubt he's going to leave because it's basically being shown who's going to be the next one. Best hand boss. And it's not Rafa, so we've still got him. And I think comfortable top 10, pushing for like, like to wear Burnley on 7. So that's just the season review from Lee and Alicia. I want to thank them, and especially you know for what they what they've done all season. They've also been on the channel throughout. Uh, it's been a fantastic season. I want to remember, you know, Rafa Benitez has done well with a squad that hasn't got a lot of quality. And they've shown their qualities over the course of the season. They really deserve to finish top ten. You know, we were in the driving seat, and to see where where it rise, you know, from February onwards has been nothing short of remarkable. And next season we will be wanting to kick on you know easy for that top seven if we can't do that eighth ninth it's, it's not the end of the world but Rafa we will want to have the money to spend uh, this, this summer uh, you let me your thoughts of your moments of the season your games that you went to games that you enjoyed and yeah thanks so much for watching don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to 100% NUFC don't forget to subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV as well I will leave a link down below in the description for them as well there will be loads of videos from that channel over the course of the summer as well so yeah cheers yeah.